Welcome to this video on solving quadratic equations by completing the square. First of all, what is meant by a quadratic equation? Well, a quadratic equation is a polynomial whose largest exponent is 2. It usually consists of a squared term, such as ax squared, a linear term, such as bx, and a constant, such as c. Below are some examples of quadratic equations. Notice that this is a quadratic equation in factored form, and this is a quadratic, quadratic equation also in factor form. Um, however, you'd have to expand it like this. You could write it as x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 2, and then multiply it from there. Some previously covered methods of solving quadratic equations are factoring using the AC method and applying the square root property. This video discusses a third method, which is called completing the square. Completing the square rearranges the equation so that we can then go on and apply the square root property. In other words, we'll have some general um, quadratic that looks like ax plus bx plus c, and then we force it, we pull out a perfect square from that. Let's take the example x squared plus 8x plus something. We want to make this into a perfect square. What number should go in the blank to make this trinomial a perfect square? What number will give us a quadratic which, when factored, has a double root? If the leading coefficient a is 1, then the equation we use to find the desired value c is b over 2 quantity squared. Let's try it. So by a, I mean the number in front of x squared. As you can see, the number in front of x squared is already 1, so we can use this um, equation. Okay. So we have x squared plus 8x plus something. Okay, so again, I just want to point out that right now a is equal to 1, b is equal to 8. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to find b over 2, and then we need to square it. So I have 8 over 2 quantity squared. Well, 8 over 2 is 4, 4 squared is 16. So the magical number here that is going to complete the square is 16. Okay, And if you're not sure, if you don't believe me, you can actually apply the AC method and um, prove to yourself that this does, in fact, give you a double root. So let's just take a minute and do that just to review and to remind you what we mean when we factor this polynomial. So we need two numbers that multiply up to 16 and add up to 8. And those numbers are going to be 4 and 4. 4 times 4 is 16, 4 plus 4 is 8. So in other words, what we're saying is that this trinomial, um, x squared plus 8x plus 16, when we factor it, can be factored as x plus 4 times x plus 4. Or we can write it more compactly as x plus 4 quantity squared. Notice that this value 4 is actually the value b over 2. So we won't have to do the AC method each time. We can just go back to uh, remembering whatever was inside these parentheses before we squared it, in this case 4, and that will be um, the value that goes inside this equation. Okay, so let's do another example. Um, so I'm going to call this example 1. That was just sort of the first intro to the concept. So we have x squared minus 10x. Okay, so right now our a is 1, our b is negative 10. Okay, so remember, in order to create a perfect square, the thing that has to go here is going to be b over 2 quantity squared. So it's going to be negative 10 over 2 quantity squared. Well, that's negative 5 quantity squared, which is positive 25. Notice that since we're squaring this, it's always, um, the c term is always going to be positive. So x squared plus, sorry, x squared minus 10x plus 25 is a perfect square. And since we created a perfect square by design, right, we're going to have x something squared. So what is that something? Well, remember that something is just this b over 2 before we square it. So it's x minus 5 quantity squared. All right, let's do another example. Here we have x squared plus 9x plus something. So we have x squared plus 9x plus something. So again, I invite you to realize that a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 9. OK, 
Okay, so to complete the square, we need to find b over 2 quantity squared. That's 9 over 2 quantity squared, or 4.5 squared. So 4.5 quantity squared is 20.25. So the number here is 20.25. And if you want, you can express it as an improper fraction instead of a decimal. I'm just going to use a decimal um, for just simplicity and ease. Okay, so um, what should go in this blank? Well, what should go in this blank is 4.5. So it's x plus 4.5 quantity squared, or if you prefer uh, to use improper fractions, you could write it as x plus 9 halves quantity squared. So let's look at example three. Notice this is different from the other two examples. If we look at the first two examples, we just have an expression with no equal sign or anything on the other side. We're just trying to find that third number that would make um, our polynomial into a perfect square. Now, however, we have a complete polynomial. We have x squared plus 10x plus 24 equals 0. So we're going to have some more steps here, and we're actually going to be able to solve for x. Okay, so I tried really hard to write out all the steps. So the first thing we want to do, as you can see here, is we want to move this constant c to, on the, to the right-hand side of the equation. So right now we have a plus 24, um, which is our c. So what we're going to do, very uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to subtract 24 from both sides of the equation. Okay. Um, then the next thing it says is to make sure our a, meaning our leading coefficient, the number next to x squared, is 1. And it is, right? So we're good there. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite this a little differently than you might expect. I'm going to write x squared plus 10x, and then I'm just going to kind of leave a blank, right? Just a blank space. Okay? And then I'm going to write equals negative 24. Okay? So um, you're like, what is this lady doing? Well, it'll make sense in a minute, hopefully. If you want, you can put a little bracket here just to remind yourself that something is going to go in that place. Okay? So then the next step, it says use the equation b over 2 quantity squared to find the value. We're going to do plus something here, right? And that's going to give us a perfect square trinomial on just the left side. Okay? So um, as we said, a is 1. Right? And then we can see that b is 10. So we need to know, well, what is b over 2? Well, b over 2 is going to be 10 over 2, or 5. Right? And then remember, what goes here is not b over 2, but b over 2 quantity squared. So 5 squared is 25. Okay? So what we need to do is we can rewrite this. Right? We have literally created, we've gone through all this trouble, to create a perfect square trinomial. Is there anything I forgot to do, by the way? Can you see anything? Well, I can't just go around adding 25 to one side of the equation and not the other, can I? Right? I have to add 25 to both sides of the equation in order for it to stay balanced. So be careful there. Okay. So um, what I want to do, uh, x squared plus 10x plus 25. By definition, I made it a perfect square so that I can do x plus 5 quantity squared. I can rewrite it as a perfect square trinomial. Okay? And if you're like, hey, where did that 5 come from? Well, remember, right, we have b over 2. 10 over 2 is equal to 5. That's the number that goes there. Right? And then, of course, b over 2 quantity squared. 10 over 2 squared, or 5 squared. Right? That's what goes right here. Okay? So let's look at the other side. We have negative 24 plus 25. So, of course, that gives us positive 1. Okay? So now, blast from the past, right? We can do what we did in the last section, which was to solve these by using, by taking the square root of both sides. But when we do that, we need to um, remember that when we take the square root of a square, right, when we're looking at even roots, how many solutions are we going to get? Well, we're going to get 2, right? We have to consider the fact that, well, 1 times 1 is equal to 1, but also negative 1 times, sorry, that's a little bit weird looking, negative 1 times negative 1 also gives you positive 1. So how do we express that? We express this as plus or minus 1. So I have x plus 5 is equal to plus or minus 1. So I have minus 5, minus 5. 
So we have x is equal to negative 5 plus or minus 1. Now, these are all integer quantities, so guess what, y'all? We can't stop here, okay? So we're going to have negative 5 plus 1. That gives me negative 4. And negative 5 minus 1. That gives me negative 6. So those are our two possible solutions. All right, let's look at another example. So again, the first thing we want to do is we want to move our constant c to the right. So we have x squared minus 4x minus 15 is equal to 0. So we're going to add 15 to both sides of the equation. And like last time, remember, I'm going to leave a space here um, that is going to give me room to complete the square. All right, so in this case, um, a is 1, right, the leading coefficient, the coefficient of x squared is 1, and b is negative 4. So going back to our steps, right, we moved the constant to the right, we made sure a is 1. Now we're going to use this equation. It's not really an equation. It's just a formula. b over 2 squared. Okay, so we have negative 4 over 2. Well, negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. Okay, and if I have negative 2 quantity squared, that's going to give me a positive 4. Okay, so the number that I need to add here is plus 4. Remember, you can't go around just changing one side of the equation. That's no fair. So we have to add 4 to both sides of the equation. We have now created ourselves a perfect square trinomial, haven't we? So we can rewrite this as x minus 2 quantity squared. If you're like, hey lady, where did that negative 2 come from? Well, it's whatever b over 2 is, right? And we already said that b over 2 is negative 2. All right. So we have x minus 2 quantity squared equals 15 plus 4. Well, 15 plus 4 is 19. Okay? So what are we going to do? We're going to do exactly what we did last time. We are going to apply uh, the, right, the square root property. We're going to take the square root of both sides. Again, this time remembering that when we take the square root of a number, we could have a plus or minus answer. Now, this is a little bit different because in the previous example, we had a perfect square. We could take the square root of it. 19 is not a perfect square, and so we just have to leave it um, exactly like it is. And the reason we're doing that, if you're like, why don't we just put it in our calculator? Well, I'll tell you why. If you put it in your calculator, you're going to get what is a decimal approximation, and we want an exact answer. Why do we want an exact answer? Well, we want an exact answer so that if somebody's going to create something or manufacture something, they can use as many decimal places as they want, and it's their problem and it's not ours. Okay? So um, if you left it like this, that would be totally fine. Um, I myself personally would give you full credit. If you're working on a software where they want you to split it up to two different solutions, um, you could write it like this, x equals 2 plus root 29 and x equals 2 minus root 20. Why did I say 29? I'm sorry. x equals 2 plus the square root of 19, sorry, or x equals 2 minus the square root of 19. Okay, so again, if you want to split it up into two solutions, you can do that. Okay, here's another example. So he's looking a little bit different, right? What's different about this? Well, one thing that's different you might notice is that that c, that constant, is already on the right-hand side. Did you notice that? Do you see anything else that's a little bit different? Well, another thing that's different is that a is not 1. In fact, it is 3. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to divide everything by 3. Okay, And by everything, I mean everything, not just everything on the left-hand side. Divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. Okay, So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3, negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. Okay, so C, we didn't have to do that, right? C was already on the right-hand side, right? Since A was not 1, we um, scaled everything, we divided everything by 3, and now A is 1, right? So now we can move on to what we're used to doing, which is to use that B over 2. All right, so, of course, again, our A is 1, right? So we have A is 1, we have B is equal to negative 2. So we need to find, well, what is negative 2 over 2? Well, that's negative 1. Right, so when we write our perfect square trinomial, that's going to be there, right? And what is negative 1 quantity squared? That's positive 1. So that means that we have to write plus 1 right here. 
Now remember, you can't go around adding something to one side of the equation and not the other. So if I add 1 to the left side, I better add it to the right side of the equation as well. So I now have x minus 1 quantity squared equals 4. So, as always, we want to take the square root of both sides. Again, reminding ourselves that when we do that, we get not one, but two possible solutions. Um, in this case, plus or minus two. Okay? If you stopped here, you would not get full credit. I need you to add one to both sides, first of all. So you get x equals one, plus or minus two. Okay? I still wouldn't give you full credit because you, these are just integer numbers, guys. You can do this. So you have, oops, I don't know why I wrote two first. So you either have one plus two, which of course is three, or you have 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. Okay, so 3 and negative 1, until you get to the 3 and the negative 1, you're not going to get full credit for this problem. All right, example 6. So again, the first thing we need to do is we need to move the constant to the right-hand side. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides. That gives me 4m squared plus 3m space, 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 space equals 9. Okay, so then the next step says make sure a is 1. Well, guys, ladies and gentlemen, a is not 1, a is 4. So I need to divide everything, left side and right side. I have to divide everything by 4 in order to make a 1. So this gives me m squared plus 3 fourths m, space, 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 equals 9 fourths. Okay? All right, then... We have to think about, well, what is A, B, and C? Let's draw a line here. Well, A is 1, as has been mandated. Right, B, oh no, B is a fraction, you guys. B is 3 fourths. Oh no. But that's okay. So let's first do B over 2. So this is fun, complex fractions, 3 fourths over 2. So you probably don't remember how to do this. Um, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So th remember, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by one half, isn't it? Right? If I divide a pizza by two, it's the same as taking half of the pizza, isn't it? Okay, so I have three times one is three, and four times two is eight. Okay, so b over two, this is important, guys, is three over eight. So when I go to factor this, right, when I make it into a perfect square trinomial, it's going to be m plus three eighths quantity squared. Okay, so then we have to figure out, all right, well, what's, what's going to complete the square? What is b over 2 quantity squared? So we're going to have 3 eighths quantity squared. Um, 3 times 3 is 9. 8 times 8 is 64. Okay, this is really heating up here. So we have plus 64. Sorry, just kidding. Uh -huh. Plus 9 over 64. Okay, and then I'm going to move this guy over. Okay, and then remember, you can't just go willy-nilly adding something to one side of the equation and not the other. So we have to add 9 over 64 over here. Oh, great. Now we have to add two fractions that don't have the same denominator. That's fun. Well, I'm going to multiply by 16 over 16 here to get both denominators equal to 64. If you don't remember how to do this, um, I can, I'll link some uh, remedial videos on how to add fractions. Um, Okay, so we have m plus 3 eighths quantity squared equals 144 plus 9 all over 64. Gee golly. Okay, so then we have 153 all over 64, and we have m plus 3 eighths quantity squared. Okay, so I had to go to another page because I ran out of room. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides of this, okay? And then what happens here? So we have m plus 3 over 8 equals plus or minus the square root of, I'm going to write it like this, with the square root of 153 over the square root, sorry, the square root of 64. And I'm going to rewrite this because it's kind of ugly. All right, so this is a doozy, right? Um, let's think about what we can simplify. Let's think about 153, okay? So I don't know if you know this, the technique, a uh, trick to figuring out um, if a number is divisible by, um, for example, 9, if the digits add together. 
Um, and all the digits are, um, so 1 plus 5 plus 3, for example, is 9. So that means this whole thing is divisible by 9. So 153, believe it or not, is 9 times 17. Okay, so I can rewrite this as um, the square root of 9 times the square root of 17. Now the square root of 9 is 3, so this is 3 square roots of 17. So we have 3 square roots of 17, and of course the square root of 64 is just 8. So we have m plus 3 over 8 is equal to plus or minus 3 square roots of 17 over 8. So then, last but not least, we simply subtract 3 8 from both sides. And we get m is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 3 square root of 17 all over 8. And that is our final answer. And as always, if you needed to split it into two different answers, you could write it as 3 plus 3 square root of 17 over 8 and negative 3 minus 3 square root of 17 over 8. Okay, those are... Uh, that's the answer split into two. All right, here's another example. We have 2w squared plus 3w minus 6 equals 0. So again, the first thing I need to do is I need to move c to the right-hand side. I will do that simply by just adding 6 to both sides of the equation. So I have 2w squared plus 3w space, space, space equals 6. Okay, then as you can see, my a is 2, not 1. So we need to fix that problem by dividing everything by 2, the left side and right side. Okay, so we have w squared plus 3 halves w equals 3. Okay, so over here um, we have our b is equal to 3 halves. So what is b over 2? Well, that's 3 halves over 2. Remember, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. So half of 3 halves is 3 fourths. So if I have b over 2 quantity squared, that's going to be 3 fourths quantity squared, or 9 over 16. So that's what I need to add to both sides of the equation. So I have plus 9 over 16 plus 9 over 16. Okay? So this is a perfect square by design. So this is w plus 3 fourths quantity squared equals... Um, then I need to get uh, 16 uh, to be the denominator here for 3. Okay, so 3 times 16 is 48. So I have 48 plus 9 all over 16. 48 plus 9 is ugh, 57. Okay, so I have W plus 3 fourths quantities, quantity squared <clears throat> is equal to 57 over 16. So once again, I am completely out of room, so I'll go to the next page. Okay, so as you can imagine, I'm going to take the square root of both sides of the equation. Okay, so this is going to give me w plus 3 fourths is equal to plus or minus the square root of 57 over the square root of 16. Okay, so let's look at 57. So again, remember that little trick. If you add the digits together, 5 plus 7 is equal to 12. Well, 12 is divisible by 3, so guess what? That means that 57 is also divisible by 3. Okay, so 57 is uh, 3 times 19. Okay, um, 3 and 19 are both prime numbers, so there's no uh, hidden perfect squares hanging out there, so I'm going to leave him alone. However, square root of 16 is just 4, so what I am going to do is I'm going to, oops, sorry, I'm going to rewrite this as w plus 3 fourths equals plus or minus the square root of 57 over 4. So we're going to subtract 3 fourths from both sides. Okay, so we have w equals negative 3 fourths plus or minus the square root of 57 over 4. So I like to rewrite it so that everything is over um, uh, one denominator. So I like to rewrite it like that. Okay, so that would be my final answer. If your homework is asking you to write it as two separate answers, we could write it as the positive solution here, like that, and then the negative solution, like that. Okay, so this is separated into two solutions. 